If your school uses Google Workspace for education, this video is for you. I'm going to look at 10 amazing updates that have rolled out in this past few months that are really going to up your game. Now, I am skipping over the admin updates and some of the smaller updates that have happened in the back end. And I'm really going to focus on those 10 updates that will impact the way you as a teacher are using these Google products. Now, the first is probably one of my favorites, and that is an update to Google Calendar. Now, the Google Calendar update is for appointment slots. Now, as you can see here, I have a block that is called Parent Consultations, and when I click on that, I can go to an appointment page. This is using the appointment slots feature of Google Calendar. Now, looking at this, it's not very user-friendly, things are overlapping, Parents didn't really enjoy using this. Well, Google is listening. They have now rolled out something called appointment schedules. This is an updated version of this feature and it looks and behaves very differently. So let's have a look at where we can find this. First things first is we have to activate this feature. So go to your settings and then settings. On the left hand side, you're going to scroll down until you find appointment schedules. This is the new version of appointment slots. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then we have to activate it by ticking the box. This is now going to create appointment schedules instead of appointment slots. We can leave these settings. Okay, I'm going to create a student check-in on the Wednesday. So let's go ahead and drag our time that we would like to be available. I want to be available from 1 till 3 p.m. And there we go. And we're going to title that student check-in. Now, as before, we are going to select one of these tabs here. So here I'm going to now select appointment schedule and I'm going to create a new appointment schedule. Let's click on continue. And this opens up a new page where we can set up these appointment schedules. So how long do we want each to be? Well, I'm going to make it 15 minutes. So we're going to have 15 minute slots. And there we go. When do I want to be available? This is going to be set to repeat weekly. I only want this to happen once. So we're going to select doesn't repeat. But if you want to have regular check-in times, you can set it up so that you are available on multiple days each and every week going to scroll down and find the scheduling window. So that means, do you want to limit the range during which appointments can be booked? By default, it's set to 60 days and four hours, but you can change this. You can change that window to say three days or maybe one hour. It's completely up to you. And then we have some additional settings. Now these settings will allow us to add a buffer time. Great for those parent consultations or when you're having physical check-ins where you need maybe five or 10 minutes buffer just to get ready for the next meeting and the maximum number of bookings per day. So if you want to have, let's say, an entire day of availability, but you don't want more than five meetings, then you can set up that max right here. We're going to click on next. Here I have, what do I want my booking page to look like? So you can have a photo and maybe even your own photograph there. We can add a location, description, and the booking form settings. This is the information that people will have to give us as they're booking one of these time slots. By default, it says first name, surname, email address. I'm going to add an item here. I'm going to add a year group because I want to know which year group this student or parent belongs to. So let's click on custom item, year group and we're going to make this a required question. As you can see, that has now been added to that booking form. We can also require email verification and we have some confirmation and reminders that we can set up. How often do we want to remind this person of this meeting? Once you're ready with this, click on save and you can now open that booking page. Let's see the difference. Open bookings page and there you go. Looks much, much better. It is clean. It has the dates on the left hand side, your days, the different slots. And when they click on it, they have a nice clean form they can fill out to schedule in that meeting. So an amazing update that I absolutely love. Now the second update is an update to Google Drive. Now in Google Drive, we have lots of files, as you can see here, many files. And when I click on this file, I would like to know where this file is located. Now we've always been able to click on the info button at the top and then find out that location on the right hand side, but 
Now, when we are in list view, Google Drive is going to show us the location in a separate column. This is such a time saver. It's a very small update, but it's helped save so much time because I can now just quickly click on that icon there and jump to that location. No time wasted looking for the location of a file. If the file is present in multiple locations, well then that will also be reflected right there. And that brings us to update number three. And this one is an update to Google Tasks. Now Google Tasks is a very easy to use, simple task manager. I'm in my Gmail, let's open up Google Tasks. We can see it on the right hand side. And as you can see, it is a great to-do list or a task manager. You can have multiple lists. So here you can see I have my tasks, but I also have a school tasks. And within those I have my to-do lists. The update that has come to Google Tasks is that we can now star these individual tasks. So let's go ahead and star this one. There we go, we're going to prioritize this. Go to a different list, my personal list, and let's prioritize planning week one of July. So let's go ahead and star that one as well. Now, when I go to my start, I see those two tasks, even though they are in different task lists. So again, big time saver, going to save you a lot of time and make sure that you can stay organized and you're not forgetting to complete all those different tasks. Update four, and this one is for Google Classroom. If you're a Google Classroom user, you will love this update. As you can see here in the example, I have a year five class, a year six class. Well, Google Classroom now lets you schedule assignments to multiple classes at the same time. So let's do that. We're going to go to classwork. I'm going to create a new assignment. This is just going to be a demo assignment and I'm going to schedule it out. Well, at the top here, it says for year six, let's make it an unmarked assignment. And I'm going to click on that drop down arrow because now I can select multiple classes. So let's select year six and year five. And now before clicking on assign, let's go to that drop down and schedule. Now, because I've selected multiple classes, it's asking me, when do you want to schedule this for each individual class? In other words, I can have this scheduled for Monday next week for one class and then roll it out the Wednesday for a different class. You can see we can add it to different topics. We can give it different due dates and different publication dates. Incredibly useful when you're using some of those assignments across multiple classes, but you don't want everyone to see it at the same time. And that brings us to update number five. And this one is for Google Meet. Google Meet now has picture in picture available. So that means you no longer have to lose sight of your Google meeting as you're presenting different tabs. So let's see it in action. Here, I'm in my Google meeting and at the bottom, I'm going to click on those three dots. So clicking on those three dots, now I can see that I can open picture in picture mode. As soon as I do that, it minimizes the camera view. It's here in the bottom right corner, but I can navigate to other tabs. So as you can see, I can jump into my Google Drive and I still see that Google Meet in the bottom right corner. If you need that space available, well, you can always move it around because Google Meet now works as picture in picture. Once you've finished, you can just hover over it, click on back to tab and everything is back to normal. You can see the large view of Google Meet. So picture in picture, another great update. And this one was for Google Meet, which brings us to update number six. And this one is for Google Forms. Yes, Google Forms is also getting some updates. Before, we've always had different color styles available within Google Forms. Well, they're taking that customization a little bit further now. When you go to the top and you go to customize theme, you will see that you can now also change the text style. So I can give my header a different font, as you can see here. I can give my questions a different font and I can tweak all these different font sizes. For example, if I want to have size 12 questions and then size nine text, I can do that. I can now customize my Google Forms experience. 
Which brings us to update number seven, which is for Google Sites. Big update to Google Sites. Now, as you can see here, I have a Google Site, it's ready. Well, I can now add my own custom themes. So when you navigate to the Themes tab, you will see that we can now create a theme or we can import a theme from another website. Why might you create your own theme? Well, because you get so many more customizations now. Let's go ahead and click on create a theme. We're going to title this a demo theme and we are going to click on next. We can choose a number of preset colors here or we can use customized colors. I'm going to just use the preset ones and let's click on next. Then we can select the different fonts that we would like to use. And as you can see, we have a lot more fonts available now. So let's just go with a number of fonts here. I'm going to select these two and then click on create my theme. There we go. Everything's changed. And an added bonus of creating your own custom theme is that on the right hand side, you can change those colors, text, images, but also, and this is the biggest update, the spacing. So when you go to spacing, you will see that we have a comfortable density now, but I can change that to cozy and the entire look and feel of that website changes. I can change it to compact. And again, there is less spacing. Everything is put together neatly, tidy, and I can really customize how my website looks. And that leads us into update number eight for Google Sites as well. We can now have full page embeds. So let's see this in action. I'm going to click on the pages and when I hover over that plus icon, I have an additional feature now where I can do a full page embed. So as you can see here, I have a full page embed. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to call this the map. Now, as this demo website is about tigers, let's pull in a map with the Thailand Rescue Center. So we're going to go to insert map and I'm going to look for the Thailand Tiger Rescue Center. OK, I quite like this. Let's click on select. And this is now pulled in as a full page embed. So now, as you see in that preview, we have a beautiful looking website. We can go to the home. That is the standard look of our website. And then when we go to map, we see that full page map. We can zoom in and out. It's interactive. It just works. And that's what I love about these updates. Now you are probably thinking these are all great, but I use Google Docs the most. Where are the updates to Google Docs? Well, Google Docs has also had a number of updates and update number nine is a Google Docs update. So here in Google Docs, as you can see, I have some demo text. We can now select multiple pieces of text. So let's say that I want to select this area here. Well, I can hold down my control key and select another area, another one and another one. Now, why might you do this? Well, you can change all of these at the same time. So if I want to bolden them, there we go. All my selections have been bolded all at the same time. I can even make the font larger. And there we go again. It applies to all the selected areas within Google Docs. And that brings us to update number 10. As you can see here, sometimes when we want to insert things, let's say a table, it just doesn't look good. It jumps across two pages. It's messy and we all know printing is not something that we do as much as we used to. So many of these documents live in the cloud in Google, but they're never ever going to get printed. Well, Google now allows for pageless documents. So in order to activate that, we're going to go to file page setup and instead of selecting pages, we're going to click on pageless. This turns this into a digital only document. So there we go. It is a fully digital document, no pages. And now when we insert that table, so let's go ahead and insert a table. There are no issues because this document is a digital document. It doesn't jump across pages. This is another great update to the Google ecosystem. So those were my top 10 updates that have come out in the last two months to the Google Workspace for Education platform. And do let me know in that comment section below which of these is your favorite update. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. To learn even more, watch the suggested video on your screen right now and I will see you in the next one.